We've talked about our rules of exponents dealing with powers and stuff in the past. We want to look at that a little bit again today, um, just to lead us into our next topic. You know, things like you know, x to the fifth times x to the eleventh. When we're multiplying exponents, the effect is to add the powers. That becomes x to the five plus eleven, or x to the sixteenth. For dividing, x to the ninth divided by x to the third. When we're dividing exponents with the same base, the effect is subtracting those powers. So it'll be x to the nine minus three, or x to the sixth. And then the, the third option was a power, x to the eighth to the power of five, ends up being effectively x to the 8 times 5, or x to the 4th. One that we did not go over, because it hasn't been a, a vital factor yet, is a root. I have the square root of x to the 8th. Remember, we don't write it in there, but this is effectively an index of 2 in that root. For square root, we don't write it in, but what that becomes then is x to the power of 8 divided by that index. So in this case, 8 divided by 2, or x to the 4th. If it were the 4th root of x to the 12th, again, x to the power of, its power of 12 divided by the index of the root, the 4th. So that would be x to the 3rd. We look at powers of 10. 10 to the power of 3, of course, we know is 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. 10 to the power of 5, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or 100,000. At a young age, most of us were probably taught a shortcut that the power of 10 tells us how many zeros go after the 1. 10 to the 5th is a 1 followed by 5 zeros. It also look at the power of 0. What does that mean? We looked at that pattern. 10 to the 3rd was 1,000. 10 to the 2nd power is 100. 10 to the 1st power is just 10. And what we saw for our pattern is that each time we reduce the power by 1, the result is divided by 10 meant 10 to the power of 0, 10 divided by 10 is 1. And we discussed how anything to the power of 0 has to be 1. If we keep going, 10 to the negative 1, well, 1 divided by 10 is 1 tenth. 10 to the negative 2, 1 tenth divided by 10 is 1 one hundred. And 10 to the negative 3, 1 one thousand. And we start to see a link between the negative powers in our exponents and the positive powers. We see that 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 10 to the positive 3. In other words, they're reciprocals. And that's exactly what a negative power represents. So x to the power of negative 5 could be expressed as simply 1 over x to the 5. But let's stick with those powers of 10 for just a little while longer. Let's look at our place values. Only instead of being 1s, 10s, 100s, 1,000s, 10,000s, and on up, I'm going to write it like this. This is 10 to the 0, which is 1. 10 to the power of 1 is just 10. 10 squared, or 10 to the power of 2, is 100. 10 to the 3rd is 10,000. 10 to the 4th is 100,000, or sorry, 10,000. 10 to the 5th is 100,000. 10 to the 6th is 1 million. 10 to the 7th is 10 millions. And we can continue on in that direction. We have a base 10 number system. Sometimes called a decimal number system. Deci means 10, base 10. 
And what that means is the bases or the place values of our number system are exponents with a base of 10. And as we've seen now, we can keep going in this other direction. And after the decimal point, this is simply 10 to the negative 1. 10 to the negative 2 is the hundredths. 10 to the negative 3 is the 1 one thousandths. Negative 4. 10 to the negative 5 is the 1 one hundred thousandths. And 10 to the negative 6 is the 1 millionths. Our place values are simply those powers of 10. And we saw that a little bit when we looked at algebraic numbers and realized that the place values there are just replaced with powers of x instead of powers of 10. Sometimes we want to abbreviate numbers. We might have something like 3,900,000. And rather than wanting to write it out or pronounce the whole thing, we might just say 0.9 million. Well, there's an even shorter way or a method that's used to calculate of expressing that. That would just be 3.9. Instead of writing out the word million, we use the power of 10 for its place value, 10 to the sixth. Some of you may be recognizing this. This is our scientific notation. Now, depending on which portion of the medical field you're looking at going into. In nursing, not a lot of scientific notation necessary. Most of your things um, stay small enough. Occasionally your calculator might pop up E to something. Um, that is scientific notation. So you do need to know how to translate that calculator display back into a useful number. Um, but if you get into like a lab tech position or something like that, anything related with the chemistry side of things, scientific notation is very heavy. It is everywhere. And the proper scientific notation takes the first non-zero digit, here that was the 3, put the decimal point after that, like we did down there, and then we name the place value that that first digit was in. The 3 was in the 10 to the 6th place. Sixth. So we might have 0 0.00072. Here we do the same thing. We find the first non-zero digit. That's the 7. We'll put the decimal point after that. So that's going to be 7.2. And then we name the place value the 7 is in. It is in the 10 to the negative place value. But we don't necessarily want to have to write out a number line every time we convert a number into scientific notation. So what we've been taught is a shortcut. We look at something like 3,900,000 and we look at where the decimal point started. That was right here at the end of the number and where we needed to move it to right here after that first non-zero digit. And we look at how many places it had to go. It had to go one, two, three, four, five places. Notice that's 10 to the sixth. The biggest question is how do we know whether that's a positive 6 or a negative 6? Well, this is a large number, 3 million. In fact, the cutoff is 1. It's larger than 1, so it is in the place values that are positive powers of 10. For our 0 .00072 decimal point started right here, it needs to end up down here. So it had to go 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. That's how we got the 4 on the 10, but this was a small number. It was smaller than 1, so that meant it was in the place values that are negative powers of 10. That is a 10 to the negative 4. So I have numbers like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I want to convert that into scientific notation. I find my first non-zero digit, that's the 3. My decimal point is going to go after that. So I'm going to have 3.8 is going to be my numerical portion of my scientific notation. Then I have to look at how far my decimal point moved. It went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spots times 10 to the 6th. But this is a small number. It's much smaller than 1, so that was in the negative powers of 10. 
base value. So that would be 10 to the negative 6. Number like 760 million. Again, we find the first non-zero digit, which is the 7. The decimal point is going to go right after that. So it's going to be 7.6. And then we need to look at our power of 10 by seeing how far the decimal had to move. Now, there was no decimal point in this number, so that means it was at the end. Then we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 spots. Put in 10 to the 8. That was a large number, so that's going to be 10 to the positive 8. If I need to convert the other direction, it's just going to be the exact opposite process. If I have 5.3 times 10 to the 9th. Start out with my 5.3. And I start moving my decimal point. The 9 tells me I'm going to have to move my decimal point 9 spots. It's positive, so that tells me this is going to have to become a large number. So I have to move it to make this larger. So I move 1. Now I'm out of digits. So I have to add zeros. So 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is 5,300,000,000. That number back in standard or decimal notation. We might have 2.6 times 10 to the negative 7. Once again, we'll start out with a 2.6 and move the decimal point. 7 tells us we're going to have to move it 7 spots. The negative tells us this is a small place value, so it's smaller than 1. So I move my decimal point to the left to make this smaller. Again, I can go 1 spot, then I have to start adding zeros. So 2, 5, 7. Here's where my decimal point goes. This is point zero 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 two six. I'm assuming you guys all know how to convert between standard and scientific. That's why I zoomed through that quickly with only one example or so of each. The real trick comes into tying in our operations with scientific. Back to what we have already learned. Remember, when we add or subtract, must have the same name. We are going to combine the counts. and keep the same name. Let's see look at what that means. If I have a number like 4.7 times 10 to the 11, when we were adding whole numbers, the name actually became the place value of each individual digit. Every digit had a count and a name. That's why we had to line up the columns because we could only combine digits that had the same name or the same place value. When we look at scientific notation, the portion of this that implies a place value is right there, the 10 to the 11th. That is the name, power of 10. So the 4.7 count. So if I want to add... Something like 4.7 times 10 to the 11. I'm going to put this in parentheses, but this parentheses is not an enclosing symbol. Remember we said parentheses serve other functions. One was to indicate multiplication. Here it is just telling us that that is a single number and not separate numbers being combined. So 4.7 times 10 to the 11 plus 2.1 times 10 to the 11 have the same name. Both are 10 to the 11. So we can go ahead and add those. We'll combine counts. 4.7 plus 2.1 is 6.8. And we keep the same name times 10 to the 11. Now it doesn't stay quite that simple. 
you can run into things like this. 6.8 times 10 to the 18th plus 5.6 times 10 to the 18th. Once again, we have the same name, 10 to the 18th. So we can go ahead and add those. We'll combine our counts, 6.8 plus 5.6, I believe that is 12.4. Now we keep the same name, so times 10 to the 18th. We have a little bit of an issue here. We have two digits in front of the decimal point. And remember, proper scientific notation only has one digit in front of the decimal point. So that means we have to move. We're going to move that decimal point over, make this 1.24. Now, we need to make sure that this number still has the same value. We don't want to change its value. So we changed this number, the count. We need to change the power of 10 to correct for that, to keep the total value the same. This number got smaller. It went from 12.4 down to 1.24. So the power of 10 has to get larger. This was smaller by one place value. Power of 10 gets larger by one. Every power of 10 is a place value. So 18 plus one is 19. That's 1.24 times 10 15. Hopefully it's something you guys already have a pretty good grasp of, but I want to emphasize this again. Every power of 10, increasing it by one or decreasing it by one, is a place value. So it's moving the decimal point one spot. Now this task up here, we do have to be a little careful with that. We deal with something like this. 7.9 times 10 to the negative 12 plus 8.5. Excuse me, times 10 to the negative 12. We have the same power of 10. So we're clear to add. We have the same name. We'll combine the count. 7.9 plus 8.5. What's that? 16.4. And we keep the same name, 10 to the negative 12. Here's the part that I said we should be careful of. We do have two digits in front of the decimal point here, so we have to move that over one, make it 1.64. Number got smaller, the power of 10 gets larger. And here's where we have to be careful is, we have a negative power. Um, we have to make sure we're working with our integers just fine. So this is 10, negative 12 plus one is a negative 11 is the appropriate power there. What if we don't have the same power of 10 when we go to add? Something like this, 7.43 times 10 to the 13th plus 8.3 times 10 to the 12th. Typically what we will do is we will go to the larger power of 10. So 10 to the 13th is going to stay, so that's just going to be the 7.43 times 10 to the 13th. This one's going to get changed to 10 to the 13th. Now we have to do just the opposite of what we did up here. Here the power got larger, the number has to get smaller. So the power went from 12 to 13, the number here has to get smaller by one point. That becomes 0.83. Now that's not proper scientific notation, but remember this is an intermediate step in the process of doing the work. So 7.43 plus 0.83, 8.26, and then we keep our same name of 10 to the 13th. We have to make sure that in integers or negatives on our counts don't throw us off. Negative 3.62 times 10 to the negative 15th plus 7.43 times 10 to the negative 15th. We have the same power of 10. Both of them are 10 to the negative 15. So we can combine these. However, we have to be careful. We have a negative 3.62, a positive 7.43. So 
So we have to combine those integers with addition, very carefully here. And we're going to get a positive 3.81, and then times 10 to the negative 15. So notice having negatives here did not affect the powers at all. It just affected how we combined the counts. So subtraction is going to work the same way. 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19th minus 0.9 times 10 to the negative 19th. Just like addition, we must have the same name. We must have that same power of 10. We'll combine the counts. 4.8 plus or 4.8 minus 2.9 is 1.9. Then we keep that same name, 10 to the negative 19th. Now, once again, this can get complex with our um, having to adjust powers. We might have something like 7.14 times 10 to the 17th minus 6.83 times 10 to the 17th. Again, we have the same power of 10, 10 to the 17th, so we have the same name. We can go ahead and subtract. 7.14 minus 6.83 is what? 0 0.31. I keep the same name, 10 to the 17th. Well, here again, we have the opposite issue of what we had with our addition. Here, we don't have any non-zero digits in front of the decimal point. There's a zero there, but remember we said it had to be a non-zero digit. The decimal point has to move this way now, 3.1. Now it made the number larger. It went from 0 0.31 up to 3.1. So now the power of 10 gets smaller by one to account for that. So 17 minus one is 16, so that's 10 to the 16th. Again, we need to be careful if our power is negative. We might have 5.43 times 10 to the negative 12 minus 4.78 times 10 to the negative 12. Again, we have the same power of 10. We can go ahead and combine our counts. 5.43 minus 4.78 equals point. Six, five. Times, keep our same name of 10 to the negative 12. Again, that number is too small. There's nothing in front of the decimal point but a zero. We're going to have to move the decimal point over. 0. 0.65 is going to become 6.5. This number became larger, so our power becomes smaller. Negative 12 minus 1 will be a negative 13. We might have 4.382 times 10 to the negative 23rd minus 4.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd. Here again, we have the same power of 10. 10 to the negative 23rd. So we can go ahead and combine our counts. 4.382 minus 4.368 is 0 0.014. And we keep our same name, 10 to the negative 23rd. Now here, not only is there not a, a, a non-zero digit in front of the decimal, if we move over one, it won't be non-zero. So we actually have to go two spots here. Make that 1.4. So we had to move two spots here, which means the power of 10 has to change by 2. This got larger, the power of 10 will get smaller. Negative 23 minus 2 will be a negative 25. We multiply or divide. Remember, we do not need Combine the counts again, then we will also combine the names.
What does that mean? Well, if we have something like 2.3 times 10 to the 11th, I can multiply that times well, 3.1 times 10 to the 18th. Notice these do not have the same power of 10. But it doesn't matter. When we multiply, we do not need the same name. So we're going to combine the counts. 2.3 times 3.1 is what? 7.21, I believe. Oh, 7.12. Times, I also have to combine the names. 10 to the 11th times 10 to the 18th. Remember when we multiply exponents with the same base? You both have a base of 10. We add the powers. So 11 plus 18 is 29. So it's 7.13 times 10 to the 29th. Now again, just like before, it's very easy to come across things like this. 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 times 7.2 times 10 to the 19th. We'll go ahead and combine 8.5 times 7.2. Math is right for trouble. 5 times 7.2, 1.2. Times, we have 10 to the negative third times 10 to the 19th. We are adding powers. Negative 3 plus 19, positive 16. So that's 10 to the 16th. Get that down to only one digit in front of the decimal point. So we're going to have to move that again to be 6.12. 10 to the 16th, the number got smaller, the power gets larger. That'll become 10 to the 7th. Or we might have 9.34 plus times 10 to the 12th, times a negative 7.6, times 10 to the negative 18. Now remember we said the negative up front here and the negative on the power work totally independently from each other. Not affect each other a bit. So have the 9.3 times 7.6. 9.3 times a negative 7.6. It'd be a negative 70.68. Times 10 to the power of, well, 10 to the 12th times 10 to the negative 18th. We add powers. 12 plus negative 18 is a negative 6. Now, even though this is a negative up here, we ignore that. We're going to move the decimal point over. Negative 7.068. But still, this number, the absolute value of this number, the magnitude of this number got smaller. It went from 70 down to 7. That number got smaller, the power of 10 does have to get larger. Negative 6 plus 1 will be a negative. Can we divide? Follow the same rules. We might have... 1.728 times 10 to the 31st divided by 1.2 times 10 to the 18th. Divide the numbers. 1.728 divided by 1.2, 1.44. Then we divide the names. 10 to the 31st divided by 10 to the 18th. Well, we're going to subtract. 31 minus 18 is 13. That'll be 10 to the 13th. Um, we might have 5.76 times 10 to the negative 11th divided by 1.2 actually let's go the other way around. 4.8 times 10 to the 7th. We divide that out. 5.76 divided by 4.8 is 1.2. Then we do 10 to the negative 11th divided by 10 to the 7th. 
That'll be negative 11 minus 7. Or negative 11 plus a negative 7. So that'll be 10 to the negative 18. He can then also have powers. We might have 3.4 times 10 to the 7th, power 5. So we still do the 3.4 to the power 5, which is going to give us 454.35. We'll round it to that. 454.35 times, now with our power of 10, we again, we use our our uh, rules for powers here, 10 to the 7th to the power of 5 will be 10 to the 7 times 5, or 35. Now we do have to move the decimal point. We need to actually move it one, two spots to make that 4.5435. The number got smaller by two spots. Our power of 10 has to get larger by two. So 35 plus 2, 7. Let's then work the same way. We could have the third root of 1.728 times 10 to the negative 18th. So again, we do the third root of 1.728, which is 1.2. And then, just as we saw in the beginning, we divide the powers. Negative 18 divided by 3 will be negative 6, so 10 to the negative 6. I show you the powers and roots just so you've seen them. Um, they are not that common of a calculation in medicine. Um, if you were to get into particle physics, there would be a lot of it. Even in chemistry, there's some. If you get into electrical, massive electrical calculations and stuff like that, there would be squaring at least. For our part, we're not going to test you on the powers and roots. I just want you to be familiar with them. Something that does come up, is something called engineering notation. Engineering notation is a variation of scientific notation. Only power of 10 is a multiple of 3. So 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, and so on. Because of that, that means that we can't stick to that one digit in front of the decimal point. We have one, or two, or three digits for the decimal. See how this works. So when I go to move my decimal point here, rather than picking where it's going to go, I just have to start moving it and see where I have to stop. So my decimal point starts here. I have to move it three spaces at a time. So I'll go one, two, three. And I look and I see I cannot go three more. So I am done. That's 490 times 10 to the three spaces that I move. Something like this, though, can get very confusing because we start with our decimal point, we go one, two, three, and it looks like we can't go three more. However, we have to. We need one, two, or three non zero digits before the decimal point. Right now, everything's a zero. So we have to go three more. Four, five, we'll add a zero to make that six. That's 720 times 10. That's it, that small, it was a small number, so it's 10 to the negative 6. But why would we complicate things with this engineering notation? Scientific notation seems to work okay. Why would we throw this engineering notation in here to complicate things? Well, because when we're dealing with medications, we have liters, um, we might have grams, whatever. We have milliliters or milligrams. 
that are 10 to the negative 3. If we think of this as being our main unit, one unit, or 10 to the 0, milli would be 10 to the negative 3. Micro looks like this funny looking U, microliters or micrograms, 10 to the negative 6. We could actually keep going down to nanoliters or nanograms, 10 to the negative 9. On the larger side, we have kilo, kiloliters or kilograms. That's 10 to the positive 3 or 1,000. Keep going, we've got mega, megaliters, megagrams. That's 10 to the positive 6. Kept going, we would have giga. We don't use gigaliters for much, but we do use gigagrams. A megagram is a million grams. That's actually considered a metric ton. Um, gigagram is a thousand metric tons. You'll notice here all those powers of 10 are powers of, or multiples of 3. Engineering notation is just our metric prefixes. So if I'm looking at, oh, let's do a electricity calculation where voltage is current times resistance. It's just fine if the current is something like 3 amps and the resistance is something like 40 upside down horseshoe symbols, the symbol for ohms. Put that in there, 3 amps times 40 ohms gives me 120 for my voltage. Pretty simple. But in most cases, units aren't that simple. 3 amps is actually a lot of amps. It might be easier to find 30 milliamps. A resistance of 40 ohms is very small. Uh, we might have a resistance of 1.2 mega ohms. Now if we put these into the formula, we have to keep the units with us um, because, well, they have meaning, numerical meaning here. Thirty milliamps times 1.2 mega ohms. That's very confusing. How do you account for the milliamps and mega ohms? Well, a lot of teachers, a lot of textbooks would tell you just turn it into point. 0, 0, 0, 0.030 amps and 1,200,000 ohms and multiply them out that way. Which works, and if that's, that's how you like to do it, that's fine. But we can work right with the metric prefixes by using the engineering notation. 30 milliamps is 30 times milli was 10 to the negative 3 amps. 1.2 mega ohms is 1.2. Mega is 10 to the positive 6 ohms. Now we go ahead and multiply 30 times 1.2, 36. And the names, 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the positive 6 is 10 to the third. An amp times an ohm is a volt. 10 to the third volts, 10 to the third is kilo. That's 36 kilovolts is what that result ends up being. So when we're doing calculations with our uh, metric prefixes, turn them into those powers of 10 from the engineering notation and do the calculations that way, then just convert them back. So there is some use there. Okay, that's actually all I have with us for us for today, so we'll get done a little bit early. A little reminder, test two is coming up Monday, February 28th. So we only have two more classes. Um, Wednesday, we'll get into measurement. Friday, we'll start getting into some heavy measurement conversions, and then that will be our test then Monday homework or 1 through 31 the odds 
That's dealing with just combining powers and exponents. And then page 87 through 88. 1 through 39, the odds, that is on the scientific. With that, we'll get you guys out of here a couple minutes early. You guys have a great day. Hopefully we'll see you all on Wednesday.